accounting standard as 4 revised 1995 contingencies and events occurring after the balance sheet date please visit http colon slash slash ic is dot blogspot dot com This revised standard comes into effect in respect of accounting periods commencing on or after April 1, 1995 then is mandatory in nature. It is clarified that in respect of accounting periods commencing on a date prior to April 1, 1995, accounting standard 480 seconds originally issued in November 1982 and subsequently made mandatory applies. Introduction. Hara 1. This statement deals with the treatment in financial statements of a. Contingencies and b. Events occurring after the balance sheet date. Hara 2. The following subjects which may result in contingencies are excluded from the scope of this statement in view of special considerations applicable to them. A. Liabilities of life assurance and general insurance enterprises arising from policies issued. B. Obligations under retirement benefit plans. And C. Commitments arising from long-term lease contracts. Definitions. Para 3. The following terms are used in this statement with the meanings specified. Para 3.1 A contingency is a condition or situation, the ultimate outcome of which gain or loss will be known or determined only on the occurrence or non occurrence of one or more uncertain future events. Para 3. Two events occurring after the balance sheet date are those significant events, both favorable and unfavorable, that occur between the balance sheet date and the date on which the financial statements are approved by the board of directors in the case of a company and by the corresponding approving authority in the case of any other entity. 2.1. Two types of events can be identified. A. Those which provide further evidence of conditions that existed at the balance sheet date, and B. Those which are indicative of conditions that arose subsequent to the balance sheet date. Explanation Para 4 Contingencies Para 4.1 The term contingencies used in this statement is restricted to conditions or situations at the balance sheet date, the financial effect of which is to be determined by future events which may or may not occur. Para 4.2 Estimates are required for determining the amounts to be stated in the financial statements for many ongoing and recurring activities of an enterprise. One must, however, distinguish between an event which is certain and one which is uncertain. The fact that an estimate is involved does not of itself create the type of uncertainty which characterizes a contingency. For example, the fact that estimates of useful life are used to determine depreciation does not make depreciation a contingency. The eventual expiry of the useful life of the assets not uncertain. Also, amounts sold for services received are not contingencies as defined in paragraph 3.1, even though the amounts may have been estimated as there is nothing uncertain about the fact that these obligations have been incurred. Para 4.3 The uncertainty relating to future events can be expressed by a range of outcomes this range may be presented as quantified probabilities, but in most circumstances, this suggests a level of precision that is not supported by the available information. The possible outcomes can, therefore, usually be generally described except where reasonable quantification is practicable. Para 4.4 The estimates of the outcome and of the financial effect of contingencies are determined by the judgment of the management of the enterprise. This judgment is based on consideration of information available up to the date on which the financial statements are approved and will include a review of events occurring after the balance sheet date, supplemented by experience of similar transactions and, in some cases, reports from independent experts. 
para 5. Accounting treatment of contingent losses para 5.1. The accounting treatment of a contingent loss is determined by the expected outcome of the contingency. If it is likely that a contingency will result in a loss to the enterprise, then it is prudent to provide for that loss in the financial statements. Para 5. To the estimation of the amount of a contingent loss to be provided for in the financial statements may be based on information referred to in paragraph 4.4. Para 5.3 If there is conflicting or insufficient evidence for estimating the amount of a contingent loss, then disclosure is made of the existence and nature of the contingency. Accounting Treatment of Contingent Losses Para 5.4 A potential loss to an enterprise may be reduced or avoided because a contingent liability is matched by a related counterclaim or claim against a third party. In such cases, the amount of the provision is determined after taking into account the probable recovery under the claim if no significant uncertainty as to its measurability or collectability exists. Suitable disclosure regarding the nature and gross amount of the contingent liability is also made. Para 5.5 The existence and amount of guarantees obligations arising from discounted bills of exchange and similar obligations undertaken by an enterprise are generally disclosed in financial statements by way of note, even though the possibility that a loss to the enterprise will occur is remote. Para 5.6 provisions for contingencies are not made in respect of general or unspecified business risks since they do not relate to conditions or situations existing at the balance sheet date. Explanation Para 6 Accounting treatment of contingent gains Contingent gains are not recognized in financial statements since their recognition may result in the recognition of revenue which may never be realized. However, when the realization of a gain is virtually certain, then such gain is not a contingency and accounting for the gain is appropriate. Para 7 determination of the amounts at which contingencies are included in financial statements para 7.1 the amount at which a contingency is stated in the financial statements is based on the information which is available at the date on which the financial statements are approved events occurring after the balance sheet date that indicate that an asset may have been impaired or that a liability may have existed at the balance sheet date are therefore taken into account in identifying